Welcome to Bass Habits, episode number 59. Today we're going to talk about Rex Brown, bass player of the pioneers of groove metal, Pantera. Pantera was an American metal band born in Texas in 1981. Starting initially as a glam metal act, the group would record four studio albums with little to no success before reinventing themselves with a heavier sound at the end of the 80s. The band eventually recorded its major label debut, Cowboys from Hell, finally achieving a breakthrough and leaving behind its glam metal influences in favor of mid-tempo thrash metal, dubbed groove metal by the band. Though normally identified with Phil and Selmo's aggressive vocal style and with Dimebag Darrow's iconic guitar playing, Drummer Vinnie Paul and bass player Rex Brown were the ones responsible for laying down the concrete blocks on where Pantera's group metal anthems were built. So let's have a look at some of the main aspects of Rex's style, focusing on the second part of Pantera's career, the groove metal years. First of all, double the guitar note by note. The secret for those massive grooves is only one. The bass and the guitar play in unison 100% of the time. That's it. You wanna sound heavy? Everyone has to play together the same exact part. If you think about it, the heavier bands in history, Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer and so on, all work like that. Pantera especially take it to another level, as Rex's extreme dexterity, or we should call it Rexterity, allows him to follow Dimebag like his shadow, including slides, bending, and vibrato. That is extremely hard to do, as Dimebag himself was a very skilled guitar player that pulled out often very complex parts, so imagine playing them on a bass guitar. Number 2. Scoop the mid-range Rex used a variety of guitars and amps, and his tone changed a bit over the years, but pretty much it's been mainly Spectre through Ampeg SVT. A big part of his sound was his scooped mids for that chunky, thumpy and somewhat empty tone that complemented perfectly Dimebag's guitar. Some say to boost the EQ around 6 or 800 Hz, but every bass and amp combination react differently to this adjustment, so I'd say just trust your ear and try to EQ around your guitar player. Having to work around a dance guitar sound like theirs, it's a logical step. And besides working great in unison with the guitar, it sounds pretty heavy also when the bass is on its own. There are a lot of bass and drums versions of Pantera's music on YouTube, so you can hear how tight and precise Rex and Vinnie Paul are. Amazing. Keep in mind, this is the 90s, everything was recorded on tape, and there's pretty much no editing. Number 3. Down tune your instrument. Another trick to get towards Rex's tone is down tuning your instrument. Pantera used several tunings over the years. On Cowboys from Hell, the band was tuned D sharp plus 40 cents, a tuning similar to the one used by Van Halen. They also used to tune a step down on Vulgar Display of Power and Far Beyond Driven, and one and a half step down on the following record, The Great Southern Tranquil. The lower the tuning, the heavier the sound. So if you're looking for a way to make your sound heavier, try bringing down a tone or so. You might have to get heavier gauge strings, The Rex use pretty much all the time a regular 45-105 set. Number 4. No rhythm guitar on solos. It might sound like a no-brainer, but it's not that usual in metal music to hear a guitar solo with no rhythm guitar, also because metal bands tend to have two guitar players most of the time. It's not on every song, as sometimes there is a guitar overdub, like on Cowboys from Hell, but for the majority it's just Rex and Vinny. And that's Pantera's trademark, as much as Dimebag's guitar and Anselmo's recipe voice. Number 5. Chromatic walking bass lines under the solos. 
So what are you gonna play under these solos? Well, most of the time it's chromatic walking bass lines. The thing with Pantera is that both the guitar and the bass let loose during solos. On top, these instrumental parts often feature abrupt pattern changes. Tempo changes. And key changes compared to the rest of the song. So most Pantera solos are literally a song within a song. Walking bass is not very common in metal music, and that probably comes from Rex's jazz background. You just keep walking. On all these solos, the bass parts are fairly busy, and their preference for chromatic scales gives that typical lamenting feeling. On floods, is practically a solo underneath a solo. So you basically hit all the main tonic notes, but adding a lot of chromatic notes in between. Rex's intricate patterns during solos often go undetected, because, you know, it's a guitar solo, spotlight is all on the lead parts, and that's where the listener tend to focus. But if you pay close attention, you'll find out that there's a lot going on in the bass department. On a few occasions, the bass part, it's a plain blues pattern. Pretty original for a metal band. Modulation is also quite common. Another recurring thing is Rex extending the final riff of the chorus to support the solo. Walk. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Number six is record your bass last. Normally, we tend to think that being bass and drums the foundation of the groove, it should be recorded first. To the contrary, Rex would record last. Vinny would lay down all the drums, then Dime would play guitar, and then Rex would do the bass. On Cowboys From Hell though, Rex recorded using only the guitar track as a cue. They turned all the drum channels off, and he just played along with Dimebag's track. That partially explains the surgical precision of these tracks. Number 7, upward slides. Another little move that happens quite often is a quick upward slide at the end of the riff. To sum it up, back in the day, Pantera was the shit. Rex is a very capable musician that often goes underlooked, and he definitely gave his contribution in crafting Pantera. The sound is unique and instantly recognizable. You got the wailing shred field playing of Dimebag Daryl, the aggressive vocals of Phil and Selmo, and the thunderous drums of Vinnie Paul. Tying all these elements together is the brute power of Rex Brown's bass guitar. Thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and follow me on Instagram.